So this video is coming in a little late, but hopefully it helps some people out. I decided to do Advent of Code in Rust this year, and I landed on this as a project structure for the thing, and I'll set it up from scratch. So first of all, we're gonna wanna go cargo new, call it, you know, whatever you want, um, go into the directory here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up a directory for our input. I'll call it data, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, and I went ahead and already downloaded it from the browser. You can't actually download it unless you're you're logged in. I think if you try to like w get it or whatever. Uh, so I just downloaded it with the browser and I'll go ahead and copy it over to the data folder like that. As for the actual code, let's go ahead and open up the directory in the editor of your choice. Head into the source directory. And before we do anything in main.rs, I'm gonna set up a directory called puzzles and a file called puzzles.rs. The idea is we're gonna have a separate file and a separate module for each day of the event. So we'll just call this day1.rs, create that. Go into there and for now, we'll just create a public function called solve. We'll get our data here as a string and we're not gonna return anything. I'm just gonna get the uh, output through, through printing. And let's actually just go ahead and print hello from day one just to make sure that it's working. In order to include this in the crate hierarchy, we're gonna go back to puzzles.rs and we're just gonna reference our module by typing pub mod day one. And now we can head over to main.rs and we can say mod puzzles and use from our crate puzzles. And we could do day one. I'm just gonna do star because we're gonna have 25 of these eventually. And in order to tell the program which day's puzzle we wanna run, we're gonna use command line arguments. So we're gonna say let args equals standard environment args and we're going to collect those and we will collect as a vector of strings. We'll match on args.len here to make sure we're passing in all the arguments we need to. So if we get one argument, that's actually not enough because that's going to be the name of the program that you're actually running. So we'll panic on uh, not enough arguments. And of course we don't actually need to handle that in any way because uh, there's nothing we can do about that. Okay, and for any other amount of arguments, because we don't really care if you pass in more than you need to, we'll just go based on this first one. Uh, we will do let day equals args1, and we'll cast that to a string slice just to make the matching easier here. And then we'll match on that so that we know what module we actually want to run. So if it's equal to day1, we will go day1 solve, and we'll just pass in string new here for now. And in all other cases, for now, again, we will panic and just say invalid argument. Now, if we go ahead and run this, we're gonna see panicked not enough arguments. And if we cargo run uh, day zero, we're gonna see invalid argument. If we cargo run day one, that's hello from day one. Now to grab our input from the file, let's go ahead and use standard file system. And then let's come down here inside of this match case after we get the argument out to a string. And we're gonna let the data be file system, read to string. And what we're gonna pass into that is we're gonna format a string. Let's give it our data directory and then an argument.txt. You don't need .txt, of course, if you're on like a Unix system or something, I like to have it anyway. And then we'll pass in the day that we just uh, got out of the argument. I am also just gonna go ahead and unwrap this data because if it doesn't read correctly from the file, if the file's not there or something, again, there's not really much we can do about that. Uh, we just need to fix it and pass in the correct file name, make sure it's there. Uh, there's not much point in really error handling that correctly. And then we just need to go inside of here and give that our data instead. And now to make sure that's working, let's head over to our day one file. And instead of printing this out, let's print out just the data directly. Make sure that all works, cargo run day one, and there's our data. At this point, you're pretty much good to go, but one last thing I like to do is use Advent of Code's test input, which they give like a shorter input that's usually a lot easier to uh, debug. Uh, and rather than just copying that into the input file, which you can absolutely do, I like to just create a test function here in Rust. Uh, call it whatever you want. Uh, I'll just call it test. And then what test is gonna do is just call solve and we'll do string from and just paste in that test data directly from advent of code. And now at this point, you can just use 
whatever features your editor has to sort of run this test here. And you can see there, instead of printing out the input from the file, it's printing out the test input that we just gave it. And this is obviously really easy to, you know, replace the text input with whatever else you want. Uh, but I mean, I just usually use what Evan of code gives you, but you know, whatever you want to do with that. So I like that a lot as a sort of boilerplate project structure for uh, advent of code for Rust. Obviously, uh, for the rest of the days, you just kind of duplicate this uh, and change everything to day two. Make sure that, you know, you put that in your puzzles RS as well. Day two. And then you'll have to go and create your day two file. Which is, you know, it's, it's a little bit of work, but, you know, at the end of the day, you are going to have to do some kind of setup 25 times over for this kind of thing. Um, that being said, if you have any ideas on how to cut down on that repetition, uh, I am pretty new to Rust, so there's probably a lot that I'm missing. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment for that and have a look down there to see if anybody has uh, improved on this. But I think this keeps it pretty minimal and it's pretty easy to uh, do the testing and do the actual running and kind of keep everything a little separate. And then you can kind of, you know, everything related to day two goes in this file. Everything related to day one goes in this file. It's a nice way to sort of separate concerns like that. So. Uh, I hope you got something out of this. Um, I've been having a good time. It's day four as I'm recording this and, uh, yeah, this has been working for me. So, uh, hopefully it might work for uh, some other people too.